Lights. Camera. Watch. The Bear. Season one. Watch. Watch. This is an awesome show, man. I was shocked that this show was made as someone that has worked in a lunch truck. How realistic it is in the sense of giving you what it's like in this high octane, stressful like environment. I feel like anybody who's ever worked in a restaurant relates to this so deeply. Mm-hmm. I worked at the Cheesecake Factory for a couple of years. Really? And that is a large chain restaurant where there are a lot of people working at mm-hmm. once. And I can say almost every Cheesecake Factory hires on like customer service skills, not actual like talent. So it's just kind of run by morons. Yes. And so the screaming, <laughs> the anger, the overwhelming, the all of it is so relatable. It, it, it hits a little too close to home. And I feel like anybody who's had any restaurant experience, which I feel like is most people, mm-hmm. really see the, like their experiences through this. And I think that's why it's so it, popular. And I also believe that, and I hope everybody gets some experience working behind like a restaurant as a waiter, as a cook, to just really understand what it takes for your food to come out and for you not just to have some appreciation. You know, It's truly eye-opening. For a while, this is always nominated for, like, the Emmys and everything since it's, it's come two, out. Two seasons. Two seasons. Both of them have been nominated. But it's always under Best Comedy. Mm-hmm. And so, like, for a really long time, I just thought this was, like, a couple guys in a kitchen, like, goofing around. hmm And I have this thing where I have a really hard time committing to a TV show. Mm. Because, like... There are so many episodes most of the time, and I'd rather watch six movies than like sit through six seasons of a show. Just personally, that's just how I watch. I feel you. So, but so many people had recommended this to me. Yep. They were like, "You would really like the bear." Mm-hmm. And I was like, "Okay, I'm gonna give it a shot." And then just right off the bat, the first episode, when I realized that it's like the emotional situation about his brother and the relationship between him and Sydney and just the general screaming at each other. I was like, Oh, this is going to be so good. Mm-hmm. And it, I also would not describe the show as a comedy. Would you? Oh, I it's feel got like, comedic no, elements. I feel like it's a drama for sure. It's a hundred percent drama of like coming of age, return of the particle son, all these kind of things. And for me, it's just that they made a very simple show very dynamic you know what i mean and i think that's what i appreciated in a day and age where we're watching like game of thrones and there's like multiple like um plot points that are going on there's really just one plot point here we're trying to get this restaurant running yep and we're just trying to navigate like all this pain and sorrow of their captain dying and we really don't know who the captain was you know Mm -hmm. because this guy um for his name mikey mikey my uh is it mikey or is it carmine carmine is is jeremy allen white the main character yeah. his brother is mikey yes mikey passes away yep carmy like all of a sudden like goes to the best like culinary restaurants and stuff like that and like becomes like the michael jordan and then for some reason or not he gets called back because his brother dies and he inherits this restaurant and he wants to i guess turn it around and you know, for me, when I saw it, I kind of felt like he didn't want to see his brother's dream die. Yeah, he's definitely there because he his dream was to cook with his brother. Mm-hmm. He's only into cooking because that's what like his brother wanted to do. And like, there's the really great moment at the end of episode one of mm-hmm. the first season where um, he's talking about hiring Sydney, mm-hmm. and or they're talk. I'm not sure if it's at the end, but they say like. Um, she wants to work there because it was a special place for her and her dad, but like yeah. she actually wants to work there because she knows who Carmi is. Oh. And um, she asks, she says to him, like, I know who you are. Like, why do you want to work here? Or like, what are you doing here? And he just yeah. says, like, making sandwiches. Yeah. And Because they, they both know that they're above that, but they both know that they can learn something from this, and that's kind of why they're there. Yeah. It was. Uh, have you ever seen uh, Good Will Hunting? Yes. So you know that, that moment when... Ben Affleck's character t- tells Matt Damon is uh, like every day I hope you're not here yeah, yeah. something like that he's like w- w- is it dishonorable like something like laying down bricks he's like yeah for someone like you but for someone like me it's like I could, I need this but you you can be anything you know so it's just it's kind of like a very breath of fresh air when we're surrounded by a lot of like unfortunate good television shows like and dramas and with this one 
is like amazing and i love the fact that they just drop all the episodes at once yeah that's always appreciated because i'm a binge watcher like don't make me wait a week yeah that's so unfortunate and i really like that it's short and there's no fluff in my opinion. And I like that they're not sticking to like a same time. Like the episodes Absolutely. have different lengths. Yes, I love that. Me and my friend, were, Robert, we were talking about this today. And he's all like, you know, like the episodes are just like, one is like 40 minutes, one's 20 minutes, one's like an hour or something else. It's just like, it's just great to see that like, we're just being creative and creating a show and like the audience will consume it. And it's you know? like, however long we need to take to tell this story that's yeah. happening in this episode is like how long we're going to take. And it's like one of those things where like when it goes next on Hulu and I mm-hmm. see that it's going to, the next episode is going to be like an hour and 20 minutes and I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, some shit is about to go yeah. down. And that's the beauty of it. Like when you see all that stuff and I, I really want to highlight the fact that they've really chosen like great characters, like Sydney's character, like the moment she walks in and she's go, hi, hi, hi. Or she does like this. Like, I immediately, like, fell in love with that character, you know? Because she was, like, extremely nervous. Because it's, like, going up against, like, I don't know, like, Anakin Skywalker, like, of the chef world. You know what I mean? Before he turns into Darth Vader. (laughs) Honestly, that's actually a pretty (laughs) pretty accurate considering... No, but you're absolutely right. Considering there are so many shows that are, like, so over the top and out of this world. This is so grounded. And all of the characters are really, really well written. Yes. And like in the beginning, you it, like the first episode from the beginning gives you just a little bit of who everybody is. Yes. And what their role in this is mm-hmm. with just enough mystery that it's like there's definitely more going on here, which mm-hmm. is great because they they feel like real people in these roles. I, I agree. I really like um, Elboy. I just love that he's kind of like this chill guy and he wants to bake. And like he like slowly is getting this opportunity. He just wants to make donuts. Yes, he just re- he really does. And I, I is it me or like are we seeing like Sydney and El Boy like in season one like have like kind of like some flirtiness? Oh, but not- it's a will they won't they situation yes. for sure. It, it's just uh like it's just really cute. And the fact that you get like this little backstory of him and his like mom's in a hospital. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it it's just it's. And he's the most like. Lovable? well-adjusted lovable yeah. character for sure so the fact that he's got like the most going on in this situation even though like carmy has so much going on mm-hmm. it's it's just he's just baking his chocolate cakes and wants to make the purple donuts yeah i just love like even just in the first episode carmy's just like waking up he like he sleeps there he wakes up yep like you have that moment that he's like that um dream sequence where he's walking to a cage and about to unleash the bear you know? that was an awesome opener for this show by the yeah. way like, I, I just didn't, you know, like, to me, it's just like, yo, like, wake up and, like, you got to run. Because he's, like, the first one there. He's got to prepare the meat. And he wants to do something a little different with the meat than it was previously done. Mm-hmm. And just, like, experiencing all the craziness and madnesses of, like, running out of supplies. And you got to do this. You got to do that. And, like, your staff just showing up whenever. Because what's interesting about that show, and this is why that restaurant only functions, is because they truly own the land. You know, like, if this was any other restaurant and you had a landlord, you couldn't be, like, dicking around. You know? There is no way of this happening. That's the one part that I feel like I'm I'm happy that they presented that. Mm-hmm. Because if they presented the, what's it called, we got to pay the rent money and pay the employees. Oh, they would have been out of business a long time ago. Yes. Then, like, uh, Richie would be really having to sell a lot of drugs. I was about to say, we have not mentioned Richie yet. Yes, cousin. Oh my god, dude. His pr- first of all, like his arc is incredible. Yes. But it's season 1. Season 1 like this is an irritating man even yes. to watch sometimes. I'm like, god fucking damn Richie, like shut the fuck up. Yeah. He he has like it's it's it just seems like he's one of those people that like thought he had this potential but never fulfilled this potential because of his ego. Mm-hmm. And I think his ego probably always ate him alive because you know mike was just like the guy that everybody loved and he had the stories and carmy was the guy that went out there and became the huge success and he's the guy that's just standing there you know what i mean yeah and he's a, like he's the fuck up yeah he's the he is but like i i'm always so curious to see like why he became that way you know what i mean yeah maybe that's something later on in seasons i'll talk about but i i really like his character a lot you know there's a, you i don't really hate him you know what i mean i just kind of understand them because we've all had like a cousin richie you know what i mean yeah that's just like he's there and he's just like fucking things up <sighs> man such a good show such a good did you have a favorite episode from season one so season one the last episode where he does that monologue i cried when he does like that eight minute monologue and he's all like he just talks about his brother and stuff like that and it's like 
he like he's like he's like I, I I didn't want him to work. He's like I didn't want to. I don't want you to work in my restaurant. So he's like, you know what? That flip the switch and fuck you. Watch this. And he goes to the best restaurants. He like goes on this like I don't know samurai journey of like learning under all of these masters to become the best. And then it's just like he's just like just, at the end of the day he's just so hurt because all he wanted to do is probably just work with his brother. Yeah. He didn't care if I guarantee he wouldn't have gone on that journey. But I guess like Mikey saw that potential in him. And he's like, look, the only way I get this kid out of here is... No, he knew if he stayed there with Richie and him in Chicago, that he was going to get up, caught up with the drugs and caught up with all the situation going on and their family life and everything that's that's in Chicago. And, and Mikey, as much as he didn't handle it well because mm-hmm. they're the way that they are and they don't communicate, mm-hmm. like, wanted Carmi as far away from that as possible. But Carmi really took that to heart and was hurt by it. But it did make him who he was. Absolutely. I, I really like that we in some ways are deconstructing that restaurant because they really had to i mean the first season itself is like he's trying to figure out how all of this works Mm -hmm. and there are situations where you know like sydney comes in and makes this crazy recipe and serves it to like this like yelp influencer and then the next day they get like thousands thing on the menu is is the risotto yes. (laughs) yes and everybody and their mom wants it and they think that they can actually like do it you know what i mean and you like at that moment like they just fuck up you know what i mean and like thankfully like it's like a neighbor neighborhood staple because if that was a new restaurant it would get destroyed by yelp you oh, know yeah like people have been it's like a place that like a like a mario's or somewhere like that where people have been going for for years i guess that they went to like there's like an iconic chicago meat what i don't know what you'd call it meat sandwich district. shop or something mm-hmm. And they shot the pilot there, and then they recreated that exact same sh- sandwich shop for the set. So it mm. is like a iconic Chicago like location, pretty much. I I just like the fact that there's a lot of realism. Like their the restaurant gets shot at like randomly by yep. a stray bullet, and it's like, hey, this is what Chicago is like. Um, there's people selling drugs by the restaurants and stuff like that. Make um, a deal with with gangs so they yeah. stay away. I mean, I, I just like that first episode where he kind of like tweet something and they're gonna get all these people to show up and play those video games and he has to like barter with like all these people just to get the restaurant set up and they get the games working you know and there's like a riot that's about to happen outside with all those people fighting the first episode really has a lot of good moments because in that moment where he has to go handle the crowd it's like the the first time that like richie's skills are used because like as much as he like takes a gun out and like shoots it in the sky which is like <laughs> not the way to handle a crowd it's like okay and this hardened corner of Chicago, maybe you do need a Richie for your restaurant, unfortunately. Absolutely. But that that kind of shows his worth. And I love that the tomato can payoff in the last episode is planted in the first episode. Mm. Because they say, like, first thing we're doing is we're not making the spaghetti. Mm-hmm. Like, the, the spaghetti makes no sense on the menu. I didn't think of that. Why are we doing it? So, episode one, they have... They're no longer opening the tomato cans. Why is he ordering the, the small cans when the big cans are cheaper? Like, we're not doing it. Just leave those there. Mm-hmm. And so because of that, like, first episode, first things they say, like, we're no longer making the spaghetti. That holds off till the end mm-hmm. of when he gives him the card note with the spaghetti recipe. It's like, it makes sense why he hadn't found it yet or where he didn't know the money went. And Yeah, it was interesting that, I forget what episode it was, but, like, when Richie finds the card or the letter... And doesn't give it, but he doesn't throw it away. You know, he's not a complete asshole. No, he's holding it, yeah. And I just wonder why he's holding it, you know what I mean? Well, he says something to Carmi, like, I didn't want to give it, like, I know it was selfish, but, like, I didn't want to give it to you because that meant it, he really is gone. Because, mm-hmm. like, I'm giving you his suicide note, essentially. Like, Jeez. he knew that that's what it was. It, it's funny, man. I want to give a shout out to episode seven. Which one's that? Um, It's the one where Sydney puts the to-go pre-orders on. But doesn't, like, cap it. So they turn it on for the day and they already have, like... Oh, and it's, like, empty. They and have, like, a crazy at... amount of orders already. And they think they can com- complete it. But then she sees the machine just going printing and printing and printing. I remember being in a lunch truck seeing that. Like, just seeing, like, it's just getting printed and just coming out and orders. And I'm Non-stop like, wow. tickets is a nightmare. That's scary. But that episode is shot in one take. Oh, wow. It follows the whole camera. It, it's it's real time and it goes through. And that's the one where the, um, I think the Yelp reviewer comes into and, and tries the risotto. But it's just another thing. It's like a show like this. 
it's it's not just trying to be like a two cam sitcom like it, it's taking chances episode by episode and like yes. introducing like interesting filmmaking techniques and stuff and like let's add to the stress of this situation mm-hmm. by not cutting away from it yes and that that episode's like shorter than the other ones and it's like extra intense but like the camera does not cut once it rolls through the entire time which yeah. i just thought was really really cool and i like how the characters are really aware of their problems and are like you know they're very much real family you know what i mean like just like this is how real families are they they're loud they're in your face they're just yelling at each other like i love that part where like carmy sees his sister and like he's like are you gonna give me a hug you know what i mean it's like and there's moments he's like you're not the only person that buried a brother too you know like they're so like detached emotionally but they're not processing it like as carefully as like and i think a lot of the reason that carmy's at this is because he's not ready to process that oh yeah not even a little bit that's yeah. like clear yeah. this, he does he has so much going on right now just trying to get him fixing the restaurant to him is processing it yes and i just like the fact that he honestly went to grief counseling went to like an aa kind of like going and talk to people because i remember him just like sitting in one of the episodes and just listening to people before like at the end where he just you know opens up yeah and really spills his beans but yeah it, it's awesome it's like and and the whole thing of like the restaurant is his way of processing it but like his brother even did knew that that's not what he wanted and he has to start new and do it his own way and that's why he left him the money you know to and, let and, him and that's great that he left him the cash because he's like Sorry. where else are they hiding this money you know what i mean and that's the thing too as i gotta say is like more people need I think to it's pay. assumed that he spent it on drugs. Like, but until it's revealed that he saved it for Carmi, like, it is assumed that this man just, like, racked up all this debt, put his restaurant under, blew it all on drugs, and then couldn't handle his mess and killed himself, and that's why everyone's so upset with him. Mm-hmm. But, like, that's actually not the case. It's like he got the money, put it aside from the banks so no one would know it was there, be able to get it. So Thankfully, they, they didn't franchise even... and do their dream of, like, having his own place. I mean, thank God no one decided to throw away the recipe. Yeah. You know what? That's like a little realistic thing. Like, imagine if they just threw away the cans, you know? Yeah, they totally... I mean, I, I doubt they would have because there were so many of them. Like, you'd probably use them at some point. But, like, that, that's totally the thing. It's like, clear it out. Just toss them away. Could have mm. waited. Could have never opened them. Yeah. Let them go expired and just toss them out. Very happy that, like, yeah, at the end, then he gets the letter and he decides to open up those cans. What else highlighted for you from season one? I think the heart and soul of the show is the relationship between Carmi and Sydney. Mm-hmm. I think the fact that they are both just are very aware of the toxic work environment that they've chosen, not mm-hmm. just the beef, but like the restaurant industry. And as much as it's like a hellscape and all the people are disrespectful and don't know what they're doing and stuff, Carmi like is basically mentoring her. Mm-hmm. And there are like moments where he's like, Oh, like you can't talk that way. Like, I expect more from you. And she's like, what do you mean? Like, I'm the newest person here. Like, I don't know what I'm doing, but like he sees potential in her. And yeah, like, absolutely. Though he can't really do much for himself at the same time, he's trying to show her the ropes. Mm-hmm. And I, I think that's what really drives the show. And I really, really appreciate that relationship. And I, what I value about Carmi as well too, is regardless of how like amazing he is as a talent, he like makes sure that everyone is an equal. Yep. Like, he allows criticism. And, like, I'm surprised people haven't said, like, thank you, chef. Or, like, so you haven't heard that in the streets or something like that. Like, these, these one-liners, you know? Oh, people definitely yell chef at him, stuff at him. No, not him. But I'm just talking about in people in, like, real life. You know oh, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, I feel like I'm going to start calling my cousin's cousin. <laughs> the cousin. You know, like, it's just, like, such a like a, a family thing. You know what I mean? Like, I, cause I call everyone bro, you know? Yeah. But, like, his thing is, like, cousin. Like, that's such, like, a, a cool... I don't know what the like. It's just they like introduce a new like way of talking to each other, you know. Because tell me, you're not gonna call your cousin cousin. Of course, it's too good not to. But um, I liked all the other cast members too, like Tina, who was just like this Latin mommy that's just like been around there for years and stuff like that, just a cook. Ibrahim, old fashioned guy. He's that's, the butcher man. He's the butcher man. He's learning how to read. I just think they're just all real characters what's the um the like fix it guy's name is it fac um maddie no 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 no. that's his real name neil 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 um what do they call him 
I forget what they called it. Okay, them. well, I I read something that like none of the cast has ever cooked before, but like Neil before acting like is a professional chef mm-hmm. and he's the only one in the show that doesn't cook. I just thought that was really funny. Yeah, and he's like the one that's that's always trying to be a cook. Yeah. But they make him Mr. Fix It for everything. And that's so inch that's like the cool part too, is I feel like people that are not like these mom and pop restaurants, like everybody knows how to do everything in the restaurant. But the way Carmi is trying to do it, he's trying to make everyone station to do like a specific task. Yep. And I really liked a part of it that like Carmi gave his knife to Tina. Mm-hmm. He's like, oh, you're going to use this, like this like crazy Japanese sharp ass sword. I think so, that's a season two moment, is it not? Is it? I think she gives it to him just like to use it for a moment because oh, okay. they can't find his knife. But I just like where they end up on the show where it's like kind of like a high point you know because throughout every episode it's like is this building gonna burn down are they just gonna lose the restaurant like every episode is just like god what else on the of this pile of shit can we add also just like the so at the end i think the last episode is fantastic from start to finish but also just the fact that like the only thing in the beginning other than like their last name is Berzato or whatever. So like the bear makes sense. Mm-hmm. And there's like the bear moment in the beginning where he's like not running from it. He's like going head towards it or whatever. But the fact that like the restaurant that they're starting is going to be called the bear was just such a like, duh. Oh, that makes so much sense. Like what a beautiful like full circle moment situation. Like I loved that. They know what they're doing with this show. Yes, they do. And if, yeah, what's it called? Jeremy Allen White does not win an Emmy for he like better. for Best Actor because... What's even his competition? Like, he's incredible in this. I don't know. Maybe, like, look, when I see his acting ability and, like, uh, from what he's done and from Shameless Now, I feel like he's, like, a Shia LaBeouf kind of guy. And, like, I, at the moment, Shia LaBeouf was, like, the hot it guy doing all these movies. Mm-hmm. I just don't want him to have a falling out, falling off point. You know what I mean? I I don't think he will. I think Shia's falling off point was that he went mentally insane. And I feel like Jeremy Allen Wright is a more cool, calm, and collected kind of guy. Just from I, what I'm seeing. I know he's just gone through a divorce, so we'll see. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I, have, I hope uh, the best for him. He's awesome. I have full confidence in Cousin. <laughs> and shout out Iowa Debris for being in literally everything. And the star of this incredible TV show. She has been. Literally everything. She's done it well. Well, I can't wait to talk about season two. Yeah, love the bear. 